Okay, this is David Vo. He is a computer science student at the University of Sydney and does cool stuff with robots from the sound of it. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, so, um, we will probably have a Q&A break in the middle-ish. Uh, so feel free to post questions. Um, me too. Right, so, as she said, I, I'm David. Uh, I, I, so I mentor a first robotics team at the University of Sydney called the Drop Bears. Um, uh, in other teaching experience, I've also tutored online the uh, NCSS Challenge, an online coding competition for school students. Um, and my first foray into open source was uh, basically um, the, the uh, Firefox support live chat back in the eras when it existed. And uh, not only is this my first LCA, but it's also my first time speaking, so rather than nervous. So before, before we talk about FRC, let's, uh, let's talk about first. So first, first robotic, uh, first or for inspiration and recognition of science and te technology is a school STEM program, basically. Uh, so, you know, so they try to get kids in, in, into STEM through robotics. So there, there's, th there's, Three, well, actually four different programs. Uh, there's uh, first Lego League, uh, which is for primary school students, and junior first Lego League, which is even younger. Um, first Tech Challenge is uh, aimed towards uh, U.S. middle school age, so around years six to eight here, um, and F FRC is aimed towards uh, years eight and up, basically. Um, these uh, start from like the really small scale to ridiculously big. So, um, so how, how FRC works is it's a uh, sports-like game, basically. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so the game changes each year, um, and it's revealed. Uh, once the game is revealed, uh, teams have six weeks uh, to build a robot to play the game. Uh, matches are between two alliances, so there's three teams on each alliance, and so during qualifying matches. Uh, you, 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 everyone's put into a round robin, so your alliance changes each match. Um, and these are 60 kilo robots, the, like human scale, basically. Um, so the control system is fairly standardized, and there's also a, a, a standardized chassis for your robot um, that you get in a kit of parts. Uh, this, this this uh, chassis is actually optional, so you can build your own chassis if you really want to. Uh, so this is the main controller uh, on the control system called the Robo Rear by National Instruments. It was actually custom designed for FRC. Um, so this, uh, so the board is actually is actually an FPGA with an ARM core on top of it. And it runs Linux, yay! So, so uh, the distro is based off the work from OpenEmbedded.org, from what I, what I've gathered. Um, there is a crazy number of pinouts on this. Uh, 
So if we start from the top left, we have a control area network bus. Um, then we have I squared C, serial, digital IO. There's a lot of those. Um, and then on the right here, uh, you have pulse width modulation. This is controlled by the FPGA. So, so you, yeah, then because the ARM core, well, yeah. Um, we've got SPI on the right here. Um, and also you have two USB ports for any USB devices such as cameras or whatnot. You could even plug in an Arduino if you wanted to. Um, this USB B port is for flashing the rubber rear. Uh, so uh, this, so the robot uh, is the robot itself is connected over Wi-Fi. So this is the radio used. Uh, yeah. Um, it runs open what is that, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, uh, so th this has actually been modified for FRC. Uh, so one of the reasons that they modified is because they've had to disable SSH because the, f the firmware has to be actually signed by OpenMesh. Uh, and they, yeah, so they have to comply with the uh, FCC regulations unfortunately. Um, but you know, you, you'll notice here um, on the, so, so, uh, so this left image here, uh, um, you'll notice that there is a power port and two ethernet ports. These two ethernet ports uh, also support power over ethernet. So you don't have to use the power barrel jack there. Um, and the other parts of the control system, uh, the uh, power distribution panel, the voltage regulator module, and the pneumatics control module. Uh, for those that don't know what pneumatics is, it's uh, basically actuation using air. So kind of like hydraulics, if you're familiar with that. Um, the PDP and the PCM connect over the CAN bus. And uh, the PDP is also self-terminating. And, but uh, they also unfortunately run cl closed source firmware. Uh, I would love to ha have a look-see at the source code, but uh, I can't seem to, yeah. Anyway, um, so we've talked a little bit about uh, some of the open source software used. Uh, uh, which are integral to the control system, but what about hardware? How does, how does open source hardware play into this? Um, so, as, so there are a few, a few so yeah, there are a couple of rules uh, that dictate that basically you can't use any designs or code that, uh, that you, you've created before build season starts. And, and you can't start building your robot before build season either. Um, so th those are a couple of rules there. Um, and if you want to have a look at the entire rules, there's one section. So an example of this is um, uh, my team uh, built this, uh, these, uh, modules that to drive the robot around. So, so the basic concept is um, you've got this top, uh, you've got uh, this bottom part which uh, can be steered separately uh, to, to the other modules. So, But yeah, uh, so, so yeah, swerve drive is where you can steer. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, questions. Questions. 
Uh, okay, so I've got a question through here. Uh, even though SSH on the, the control radio comes disabled, is there a way to enable it? So with, with the particular radio the, that uh, I showed, uh, the, the radio will not accept unsigned firmware. Um, so, so this is this actually like cryptographically uh, signed, so you can't actually. Yeah. Um, and a question there. Yeah. Um, so you said you can't use stuff that you designed prior to the competition. This thing runs multiple years. That, does that mean you can't reuse componentry that was used in prior years by your team? Uh, you can, but it has to be public. Or what are the? Yeah. So, so, so if you want to use designs or code. Uh, that you've created before you know, the season, it has to be public before you know, before the build season starts. Um, but yeah, you, you, you know, anything that you machine, you can't use. Yes. You haven't talked about power. What sort of battery power oh. system do you use? Yes. Power of a 60 kilogram robot. It, so it's just a 12 volt lead acid battery. So basically half a car battery. Uh, any other questions? So, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how uh, FOSS works in FRC. So there are three officially supported languages in FRC, C++, Java, and LabVIEW. Uh, so LabVIEW is a proprietary visual programming language, basically for engineers who don't know how to program. Um, it looks something like this. Well, this is actually um, like the first result that I got from an image search, and it's actually a rather extreme example of what not to do. But yeah. Y y it's messy. Anyway, so WPI lib is the um, is a library that's uh, that's distributed to all teams uh, specifically for to make it easy to control the robot. It it is so it is supported by first um, WPI is some college in the US which seems to be connected with first in some way. I'm not quite sure how, but yeah. So they have, so, so they, so what, what WPI lib provides is a, an object oriented interface for C++ and Java. Uh, it also, uh, there's also a how, which exposes C interface, but it's actually written in C++. Uh, but, the, but it, but, the C interface is basically so that other languages can hook in. Um, and I'll get to that a bit later. Um, the officially supported IDE is Eclipse. So, so WPI also distribute Eclipse plugins. Um, Network tables is a custom protocol for communication, uh, mainly between the robot and a dashboard. So uh, WPI lib also provides a somewhat simplistic dashboard. Um, and a CS core or camera server is basic, uh, provides a, a simple way of, of programmatically setting up a, stream, a, a camera stream and Hooking that into an into OpenCV. So OpenCV is a computer vision uh, library that's open source. Um, also, in uh, so recently, so actually last year, uh, WPI lib uh, forced a, a move of third-party drivers. So for for devices that don't come in the kit of, in the kit of parts. Uh, because it turns out that it didn't quite scale well for them. 
Um, so there were there were some interesting challenges uh, for uh, for for uh, manufacturers there. Uh, Open Rio is a community. Um, this this community uh, basically provides various tools and libraries to make uh, FRC development easier for teams. Uh, the main project they have is actually a Gradle config. So you don't have to, have to use Eclipse to write code for your robot. Uh, um, yeah, IntelliJ idea is much nicer than Eclipse in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so a community also supports Python on the robot. Um, so we actually have to build Python 3.6 ourselves. It takes a while. Um, but yeah, there's a, so, but luckily you just have to build it once and then you can distribute it to all teams. Um, we also have a pure Python implementation of the network tables protocol. Um, and then we ha and on top of that, we also have a package that allows you to write your own dashboard in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So instead of teams having to, say, modify the dashboard that WPI Lib provides, which has been in Java, you can instead use web technologies, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, yeah. uh, there is also robot.net, which is a community-ish that, uh, that provides .NET bindings written in C Sharp. Oh, oh crap. So they also uh, provide mono builds for the RoboRio. Um, unfortunately, they don't support .NET Core yet. Um, it doesn't seem to be as actively maintained as RobotPy, uh, but I think that's because the main maintainer is also a dev for the main WPI lib, so it's been a bit busy. Uh, there's also another community called the uh, Open FRC Initiative. So the Open FRC Initiative is a community that basically aims to port slash re-implement FRC <coughs> things in other languages, sort of. Um, I'm not too sure about this community because uh, they only started in the middle of last year and they haven't quite made a lot of progress, but um, by the looks of things, they, they, they looks like they're mainly trying to support uh, Go and Rust usage in FRC. Um, yeah. Uh, there is also uh, so the FRC driver station. So the, the piece of software that you have to install on your laptop to, uh, to interface with the robot uh, is actually closed source and, is, and Windows only. So yeah, all, all, all teams have to, to run Windows on their laptops, unfortunately. Um, but some people have reverse engineered the protocol that the driver station uses. Uh, and implemented a library and a Qt interface. Uh, so, so, um, team, so basically, it, and this is helpful mostly to the programmers that have to quickly test their code. Um, there's also an Android app for it. Um, yeah, appa apparently people in their robot reveal Listen, they like to drive a robot around with their phone. Um, but yeah, th this, but this isn't a complete re-implementation of the driver station. 
So um, there, there is a protocol used by the field management system uh, that talk, so the field management system, it, this is really weird. The field management system actually talks to the driver station, which then talks to the robot, the, which is how they force you know, the robot to be enabled. Um, it's weird. I don't know why the FMS doesn't talk directly to the robot, but yeah. So Q driver station hasn't implemented uh, that part of the protocol, so you can't actually use this at a competition event. Um, so I've talked quite a bit about community so far. Um, and I think community is important. You know, community, uh, but how well do these communities work? Um, what guidelines are in place for them. So there is a code of contact. Well, actually, it's an entire section of the game manual dedicated to conduct rules. Um, but I think this, this rule here uh, summarizes it quite well. Be a good person. So, so, but then, so I, I talked about uh, earlier about how you have to have your code public if you want to reuse it later. Um, but how often would you actually want to open source your robot code? It, would there actually be a use for it unless if you're designing custom hardware? Well, it turns out there is. Um, there's so um, vision processing tends to be quite useful um, in FRC. So uh, on on the on each, on the fields for the in FRC games, there there is almost always. In fact, I think there has been always for the past. 10 years or so, um, there's been retroreflective tape on the field you know, in some important, some important part of the field. Um, so th this here is an image uh, that was taken uh, by, by uh, a camera on the robot uh, set to uh, really low uh, exposure. So the, these, this retroreflective tape is being illuminated by green LEDs uh, uh, attached, affixed to the camera. Uh, it, it tends to be that green is a, a good color to, uh, for, to use for your LEDs because uh, A, it usually uh, doesn't match uh, any color that's used elsewhere on the field. And also just because uh, there's, it's right in the middle of the color spectrum. So uh, you tend to, to get a better um, capture of, of green. Um, also motion profiling. So motion profiling or is, what I mean by motion profiling is actually um, basically path planning. So you pl so you plan ahead of time um, uh, basically where you want to go, how fast you might want to go, etc. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice library uh, written by an FRC mentor uh, over at WA. Um, and she has open sourced uh, her, her library uh, for all teams to use. Um, so, uh, what, uh, so there are a fair few things that I wish would be different in FRC. Um, 
So I would like to see a more open development of all the FRC utilities, uh, mainly the driver station and the radio configuration utility. Uh, so the, but I, but the, the driver station is written in LabVIEW, so I'm, I'm not too sure how well open source would fit into it. Uh, but the radio configuration utility um, is, is written in Java. Um, and and it, so, the radio, so the radio configuration utility also comes with the firmware that you have to flash onto the radio yourself. Uh, it actually uses AP51 Flash, which is open source. Uh, but the, the integration uh, that the utility has with, with AP51 Flash doesn't work quite well. Uh, every single time I've, you know, I've tried to use it, I've actually had to, to disable uh, all the internet, all the network interfaces on my laptop, uh, except for the Ethernet that I'm trying to use uh, to actually flash it. Um, there, there, I actually had a look. There, there's actually a special case in the utility that says if if AP51 flash only outputs one interface, then just use that interface. Which is weird because, uh, because when you start up the utility, it actually does ask you what interface you have your radio plugged into. But, but it just doesn't seem to work when you, you're, you're trying to flash the firmware. Um, also, uh, I, I would like to see uh, FRC have more open beta testing. So FRC, uh, before each build season, uh, they have a beta program where, um, t uh, where teams are invited to beta test uh, the next season's uh, libraries and, and software. Um, it, it was, it was a, Interesting challenge. Uh, so I'm actually one of the devs for Robot Pi, and one of the challenges we faced uh, was um, it was really difficult for uh, for us to actually test our implementations because uh, we didn't necessarily have a, a robot that we could test on because the the uh, tool chain for the image uh, changed from, uh, since last year, and so so they've bumped the uh, GCC version, and so anything that we compiled w wouldn't actually link on the new image or the old image if you're using the new tool chain. Um, also, um, third party uh, third party libraries also. So participate in this beta program. Um, a, a specific example, uh, which was a tad bit of a mess this year, was the Cross the Road Electronics uh, libraries. So Cross the Road Electronics also, uh, in addition to uh, some of the some of the parts that are in the standard control system, uh, also have motor controllers that uh, you can connect over the CAN bus. Um, this year, uh, so a few months ago, uh, well, actually, I think it was pretty much the entirety of last year. But so this year, they released a new version of their libraries called Phoenix which was actually a complete rewrite. So, um, so, so uh, from what I could gather, uh, their intention with this rewrite was to actually unify the, the, two, uh, the two libraries for, 
one for FRC and one for other uses because uh, CTRE's audience isn't just FIRST Robotics teams. Um, the, the API is a little bit cleaner, but, um, but, in, but the, the libraries were released really late. So about one week before build season, and so all these teams were preparing uh, their code, you know, uh, because because uh, these motor controllers are actually quite complex, and they can do really complex things. So, but because the entire interface changed, all of a sudden, all the teams had to rewrite their code frantically, and. Yeah, th there was quite a bit of backlash from the community about that. Um, uh, also, I, I would also like to see the firmware being uh, open source. E even, even if uh, I can't actually flash, it onto, uh, flash my own custom firmware onto all these things, I, I would at least like to see what's happening uh, in, at the low level. Um, uh, one reason is because uh, I think our team may have found a, a weird uh, bug in these motor controllers that, uh, that we use. Um, we think it's a firmware issue, but uh, it's hard to track down because closed source. Anyway, so. So the takeaways uh, I, I, I want to, uh, I want to, from this talk is community is important, right? Uh, without community, um, to echo yesterday's keynote, we, without, uh, without a healthy community, uh, we, will, we wouldn't be as productive. If, if um, you're not, uh, if 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 you're not going to lead the community yourself, uh, at least have some sort of framework that a community can grow in. Um, yeah, no nobody should uh, should uh, stay away from the world because because uh, otherwise you, you because there are a lot of resources out there uh, and. Everyone should take advantage of these resources. If 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 you if you just silo yourself away, then you're just going to be spending earning a lot more effort on something that might be already solved. And also, communities should be uh, as open and transparent as possible. Uh, for, for especially. With the uh, beta testing, you know, it, it, it would have been great if if the team, if if every team were able to beta test uh, the these that that third party library as it was being developed, because then teams could actually uh, uh, be able to rewrite their code uh, and be able to test their code. Um, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Uh, please get involved. Yes, yes, questions. Has anyone got any questions? Hello. Um, so you were talking about different open source languages that you can use to program the robots, and you mentioned Robot Pi, yep. which you're obviously involved in in some way. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And also you said 43 teams used Python. Out, out of how many? Uh, Roughly. Actually, can't. Like, is it out of 100 or out of 1,000? There are thousands of FRC teams. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the RobotPy community is 
uh, the largest community support uh, community that supports a a non supported non non officially supported language. Um, yeah, forty four. Uh, so that was actually forty three teams last year, up from thirty three the previous year. Uh, th those statistics are ac actually come from usage reporting that they build that uh, WPI lib built into the how. So so the robot actually actually sends some telemetry to the driver station, which then sends that to the field management system that first then collects and uh, aggregates and also anonymizes, of course. Any other questions? I think we had a question over here. I'm just curious if you have some images of the robots themselves and the games they play or footage of it? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, actually, uh, so if this loads, any other questions possible waiting? That's the 2018 season. Hi, David. Um, just wondering uh, if you know the rough proportion of uh, students to mentors in some of these open source communities. It's an ex interesting question. Um, so, uh, so the I know the Open FRC initiative, I believe, was started by a few students. Uh, I don't think there are actually any mentors involved in that. Uh, otherwise, I'd suspect that they'd probably be a tad more active. Um, uh, Open Rio is mostly headed by the the mentor uh, over at WA that I mentioned. Uh, but uh, with RobotPy, uh, so uh, the head mentor and myself uh, do encourage uh, the software members of, software students of our team to actually contribute. And the, there, there is, uh, our, our vice captain does contribute a fair bit. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, it's it's hard to actually give uh, give uh, rough numbers because not everyone actually says, you know, hey, I'm a mentor, or hey, I'm a student on their GitHub profile. So. Any other questions? Um, I have a gift for you. Thank uh -uh. you very much, David. Well done. Thank you, Liz.